Getting Your Priorities Right. Today is Monday, the 27th of April, 2020. Time for another life-changing word devotion. Good morning, my beloved family. This is with a deep sense of humility and an abundance of gratitude to our Jehovah God that we present to you another week of the Christian Mission International Online Morning Devotion. To God, we publicly say thank you, Heavenly Father, for the rich blessings bestowed upon us in the past week. This morning, we will continue with our focus on God's divine call in this season of disillusionment. Yes, my family, Jehovah God desires us to one, refocus by turning our attention 100% to him, and two, retool, that is to engage in acquiring the skills necessary to function effectively in this transforming age of technology. Our theme this morning is getting our priorities right. And our text will be taken from Philippians chapter four, verses four to 13 and verse 19. My friends, let us consider first of all, Rejoice in the Lord always. What does that mean? How can we rejoice in the Lord always in the midst of challenges? I'm thinking now of a songwriter who says, Hallelujah, anyhow. Never, never let life's problems get you down. When life problems come your way, Hold your head up high and say, Hallelujah. Anyhow, verse 4 of Philippians chapter 4 tells us, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That repetition of the word rejoice is for emphasis. And the Apostle Paul, as he was speaking back then, is calling on us to rejoice in the Lord. Give God the glory and give him the praise. Thank you, Jesus. God is saying to us, be measured in our dealings with humanity, or be measured in our dealings with our fellow man. Verse five says, let your moderation be known unto all men. And the reason is, the Lord is at hand. We are called upon this morning not to be overindulgent or excessive in our dealing each with the other. But as we would want for ourselves, we are also to do to others. Our third point of consideration is borne out in this sixth verse which says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Hallelujah. Be careful for nothing. In other words, stop worrying. Somebody says worrying gets us nowhere. It is like a rocking chair. It gives us something to do, but gets us nowhere. And you know, for a fact, when you get into that chair and you rock forward and backward, forward and backward, if you were to do it for the whole day, at the end of that forward and backward movement, you will get off just where you got on. So my friends, don't worry. Somebody else say also, why worry when we can pray? Again, verse 6, 
Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. We are confident that whatever we take to God, he will indeed give us the answer. And the next point of consideration is the solution. The solution when we take everything to God in prayer. Verse 7 tells us the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, hallelujah, shall keep our minds and our hearts through Christ Jesus. I'm sure that all of us long for peace and especially a peace of mind. We say peace because sometimes there could be strife in our environment. But when we have that inner peace, that peace of mind, it relaxes us and it causes us to be able to focus on the task at hand. And often where there is peace, there will always be good productivity. That peace today I'm saying to you can be found in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So as we make that bold decision to refocus by turning our attention to him, let us also apply the principles of this chapter. Again, the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep our hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. And the Apostle Paul, as he goes on to the eighth verse, he begins by using a word that speaks about a conclusion. He's coming to a conclusion. He's wrapping up the thought process at the beginning of this chapter. And he says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. In conclusion, as I move along with the Apostle Paul, I am saying to each and every one of us today, in the midst of the crisis that we are going through, we have been called upon to refocus, focus on God and the things of God that will bring hope and give us the assurance to get through every day. I'm saying according to that verse, that we ought to think on things that are number one, honest, honesty. There are those thoughts that will come up in our minds to individuals. And we need to be very vigilant so that in, instead of entertaining those negative thoughts, we ought to release or to dismiss them. It, this is going to call for some drastic changes at this time. It will mean at times that we have to release persons with whom we've been associated with. And it is important if we are to grow and if we are to develop and if we are to get to that point in Christ where we are in alignment with him, things need to be changed. Individuals, association, relationship need to be readjusted because the ultimate goal, I believe, for each and every one of us is to please God in our daily living. So think on things that are honest. My friends, think on things that are just. Think on things that are pure. Think on things that are lovely. Think on things that are of good report. And I pause to interject and in focus in on things of good report. Again, individuals may bring reports that are not true. They're not positive. They're not enlightening. They're not edifying. Again, we have to be quick enough 
to release or to dismiss. What I have found working very effectively in this time of shutting, because as I advise my members and friends, and even on social media, those who will pay attention on this page, I advise many to focus on means and ways how we can help lift a brother, encourage a sister. So when my conversations start on the phone, it is strictly to inquire of the nature and inquire of how an individual might be, to hear any comments they might have to make, and then it is, let us pray. Because ultimately, regardless of what we are going through at this time, the only individual who is able to bring us through and to bring us through more than a conqueror is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So our concern, our commitment, our dedication, and our devotion should be to share with others the gospel and the principle for living as outlined by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So whatsoever things are of good report, they have virtue because the verse finishes off by saying, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. The things outlined are all of having great virtue or substance that can help and enhance in our lives. So these are the things today that we are called upon to focus on. So when it comes to getting our priority right, it is where our focus is. Are we indulging in things that are uplifting? Or are we giving second place to the things that are important? Are in our priority means putting the things that are positive and upliftment before us at the help of any schedule that we may write physically right or mentally construct. And I assure you, as we do that, God is going to guide us. He's going to direct us. He's going to open to us doors of opportunities and vendors of blessing so that we'll be able to ultimately realize the goal of being in total and complete fellowship with Him. The Word of God in this fourth chapter of Philippians gives us the admonition that there are those things that we can focus on. And I want you to hear as we continue and come to a close the thought process of the Apostle Paul. He says in verse 9, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me he says to do in other words i have been an example for you follow my example practice the things that i outline to you now what is the conclusion when we do that we give god thanks he says the god of peace shall be with you so when we apply the precepts and the concepts of god's word follow his guidance and his instruction the God of peace will be with us. And then in verse 12 and 13, he concludes in a very emphatic way. In verse 12, he says, Look, I know how to be a base, and I know how to abound in everywhere and in all things. He said, Look, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need. In other words, I have gone through many experiences in life, whether they were the mountaintop experiences or the valley experiences. These experiences that I have undergone in my life, the Apostle Paul is saying, has shaped me and brought me to a position of confidence in God, the God in whom I serve, the God in whom I'm persuaded, that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. Hence, he came to the conclusion of verse 
13, a verse that I believe all of us knows very well. Hear this verse and let it be a part of the principle guiding us in the way forward. What verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He then came to that point of realizing, well, I'm depending upon my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I have confidence as I order my life and my priorities in alignment with His will for me. There's absolutely nothing that I will be unable to do. And I present that to each and every one of us today. When our life is in alignment with God, his principles, his precepts, and the things that he instructs us to do, there will also be absolutely nothing that we will be unable to do. With God and myself, God and you, as a very formidable relationship, one that will help us to overcome any obstacles that we may encounter in our way forward. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I would like us to repeat it at this time, inserting our name. I, Lennox Wiggins, can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And that is not a vain statement. We have the assurance of the fact of Christ helping us through all situations. As he climaxes in the verse 19 by saying, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. But my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And again, we can insert our name as we focus on the thought, Jehovah God shall supply all of Lennox Wiggins' needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I can't finish without focusing on that word according according to his riches in glory. There is no limit to the riches of our divine Father, God in heaven. His riches are limitless. He, as the word says, he holds a world in his hand and the cattle on a thousand hill in his. And the word is saying to us that he promised to supply our needs according to his riches in glory. It says to you and I right now, that there's no limit to what God can and will do for us. If you were to ask me to make something, an offer, in order to give you a little assistance, hallelujah, my limit might be 50 or $20. So I can only give you according to that. I cannot exceed that. But with God, there is no limit. There are no boundaries. Whatsoever you stand in need of right now, he stands ready to supply it according to his riches in glory. My prayer this morning, that as we have reflected on the word of God, that you will continue to meditate on it throughout the day. And that as we meditate on this word, there will be no elements of fear, worry, or disillusionment in our lives because we know God is for us and because he is for us no one will be able to stand against us heavenly father right now in the name of Jesus we take your word and we apply it to our lives we pray even now heavenly father that we will not only be hearers of your word but as we go through this day and through this week that we will be doers of your word. Help us in our meditation of your word to receive the revelation and the instructions with clarity that you will communicate to us so that as we apply your word, indeed, we will grow in the grace and knowledge of you. Take thanks, Heavenly Father. Bestow your blessings upon us and do for us this day 
more than we can ask, think or desire, because we ask it all in the name of Jesus with thanksgiving. Amy and Amy. A very pleasant good morning to each and every one of you. As you go through the day, remember, get your priorities right. Give God the opportunity to work in and through you. God bless you. And God be with you. Until we meet again.